The oratorio which is being rehearsed is by Handel. But I didn't stay to hear it because before it came on, they rehearsed a psalm, a Magnificat, by Fogler, the deputy Kapellmeister here, and it lasted almost an hour. I have never in my life heard such stuff. In many places, the parts simply don't harmonize. He modulates in such a violent way as to make you think that he's resolved to drag you into the music by the scruff of the neck. Not that there's anything remarkable about it to make it worth the trouble. No, it is all clumsy plunging. I won't say anything about the way in which the ideas are worked out. I will only say that it's impossible that a mass of Foglers should please any composer worthy of the name. To put it briefly, if there's an idea which is not at all bad, it certainly doesn't remain not at all bad for long, but soon becomes beautiful? God forbid, no. Bad and thoroughly bad. Deputy Kapellmeister Fogler, who composed the mass which was performed the other day, is a dreary musical jester, an exceedingly conceited and rather incompetent fellow. I thought I should not be able to keep myself from laughing when I was introduced to the people there, some who knew me by repute were very polite and fearfully respectful. Others, however, who had never heard of me, stared at me wide-eyed, and certainly in a rather sneering manner. They probably think that because I'm little and young, nothing great or mature can come out of me. They'll soon see. Herr Kapellmeister Holtzbauer himself took me today to Count Savioli, the intendant, and Cannabich happened to be there. Herr Holzbar spoke to the Count in Italian, suggesting that the Elector ought to grant me the favour of a hearing. He added that I'd been here 15 years ago when I was seven, but that now I was older and more developed in music as well as in body. Ah, said the Count, ah. Goodness knows who he thought I was. But Cannabish stepped in at once and I pretended not to hear and fell into conversation with some other people. I noticed, however that he was speaking to the Count about me with an earnest expression. The latter then said to me, I hear that you play the clavier quite passably. I bowed. The Elector, the Electress and the whole court are very pleased with me. At the concert on both occasions when I played, the Elector and the Electress came up quite close to the clavier. After the concert, Cannabish arranged for me to speak to them. I kissed the elector's hand. He remarked, I think it's about 15 years since you were last here. Yes, your highness, 15 years since I had the honor. You play admirably. He's a most gracious and courteous gentleman. He said to me, I hear that you have written an opera at Munich. Yes, I replied, but my dearest wish is to write an opera here. I beg you not to forget me utterly, and I smiled. That can easily be managed, he answered. Yesterday I had to go with Cannabish to Count Savioli to fetch my present, just as I expected. No money, a gold watch. Ten Carolins would have suited me better than the watch, which, including the chains and the mottos, has been valued at twenty. What one needs on a journey is money. And let me tell you, I now have five watches. I am therefore seriously thinking of having an additional watch pocket on each leg of my trousers so that when I visit some great lord I shall wear both watches so that it won't occur to him to present me with another. I, Johannes, Chrysostomus, Amadeus, Wolfgangus, Mozart, hereby plead guilty and confess that yesterday and the day before, not to mention on several other occasions, I did not get home until midnight and that from 10 o'clock until the said hour at Cannabish's house and in the presence and company of the said Cannabish, his wife and daughter, did frequently, without any difficulty, but quite easily, perpetrate rhymes, the same being, moreover, sheer garbage, on such subjects as muck, shitting, and arse-licking, and that too in thoughts, words, but not in deeds, and I must admit that I thoroughly enjoyed it. I wish you, dearest Papa, a very happy new year and hope that every day your health, which is so precious to me, may get better and better to the advantage and delight of your wife and children, to the satisfaction of your true friends and to the vexation and annoyance of your enemies. 
One thing has upset me a little bit. Your inquiry as to whether I wasn't perhaps getting a little lax about confession. I have nothing to say to this, but just let me ask you one thing, and that is not to have such a bad opinion of me. I like to enjoy myself, but rest assured that I can be as serious as anyone else can. So once more, I beg you most humbly to think better of me.